it's Melissa from designsmylittlebee.com. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial to show you how to use Embrilliance Essentials to merge a design onto a blank in the hoop design. Today I'm going to be using my blank hand sanitizer case and I'm actually going to be merging two elements from a whole other project which is a lip balm holder onto this design and then personalize it. Now, one thing I do want to mention so that I don't have to do a whole other portion after the tutorial, I want to show you real quick, I made a mistake when I was stitching it out the first time, I forgot to add pull compensation to the name. What does that mean? Well, I'll talk about it later in the video, but I just want you to see this little error that I made so that you can get a visual when I mention that in the video. When you're using vinyl, especially white vinyl for whatever reason, it's not uncommon to see portions of that font sink into the vinyl. The way you fix that is to add pull compensation. You can see the difference in the two projects. It makes a big difference. So later in the video, when I talk about pull compensation and I show you how to add pull compensation to that font, you'll know what I mean. So remember, I'm trying to help you get this result and not this one. So let's go to our Embrilliant software and I'll show you how to merge those designs onto the blank case. Now, as I like to remind you when I do these videos, since I'm the digitizer, I have the working files for these and I could bring up the working file and merge different uh, elements in as I want them and change them using that working file. That doesn't really help you as a customer or to see how you can use your software to merge and edit a PES file or an EXP file, etc. So for the purposes of my tutorials, I like to use the PES file um, that my machine would use to show you exactly how you would do it. So as usual, I have my folders open on another monitor. I'm going to click on the blank sanitizer case PES file, drag it over into my Embrilliant software and let go. There it is. If you click in that window, you'll see the different color steps. Now I'm going to go into the buttons and bows folder where I keep my little lip balms. This is what I'm going to merge with. Drop the bow and drop the buttons. Now one thing you do want to pay attention to when you're talking about merging, I'm going to zoom in on these on these little shorts just to show you. Um, if you want something that has an outline and it does not it is not fully outlined such as this one. This one is only outlined around the edges. It doesn't have it on the top doesn't have the outline on the bottom. Keep that in mind when you're looking at a project if you want to merge it. If you wanted an outline around it, you would have to have the digitizing software to add it in or you'd have to just use something else. Okay, now for this project, I don't want an outline anyway, so I don't care. So I'm going to zoom back out. Now, of course, the way that I do this, I love to say this is the way that I merge. I'm going to do certain steps that I'm used to may not be the most effective in your opinion. You may do it a different way. It may work better for you for a certain project you're working on. That is all okay. There might be 10 different ways to do this. For example, when you are copying and pasting, uh, off the top of my head, I can think of three different ways to copy and paste. I have a Windows computer, so I could do Control C and Control V for uh, copy and paste. Um, you can go up to the top of your essential software and there's this copy button and this paste button. I know that you can right click and choose copy and choose paste. There are different ways of doing things. Now, when I um, am merging and editing designs, I do control C for copy, X for cut, V for paste. I almost always have my pinky on that control key and my index finger uh, by the C, X, and V. That's how I work the fastest. That's the way I do it. You find a way to do it that works better for you, super. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the bow lip balm and I can see the different steps here. There's red, that looks like the placement. There's the fill, I do want that. There's an outline, I do want that. Then it moves on to an outline for a lip balm. I don't need that. All I need is these two steps. So I'm going to select the yellow fill. I'm going to hit control and select the outline. Now I've got those two selected. I'm going to control C and X. Now they're still in there so I can copy them or paste them in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to delete that lip balm. I don't need that. It's not going to do me any good. Now I'm going to click on this window and I'm going to hit control V for paste. Now there's my bow. You can see that this bow is selected 
and this is just a free agent, if you will. I can turn it, twist it, I can go up here and rotate it using these arrows. Now for the particular project I showed you, I'm just gonna try to do the same thing. I turned it kind of catty corner and I put it right there. That's where I liked it and that's set, okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing with the buttons. There's the placement, don't need that. There's the fill, an outline, buttons, that's all I need. I'm gonna copy, cut, get rid of that lip balm, I don't need that. And I'm gonna paste it right there. I'm going to move it up here, and you know what? I think it's a little big for my liking, so I'm going to shrink it just a little. Using essentials, you can shrink, there you go. And you can see up here that it shows you the percentages up here that you just shrank that element, okay? Look at it, 91.7. Um, this satin outline around these elements is a little thin already. I really don't wanna make it too much thinner, so I just, I wouldn't shrink this any more than like you know, 10% down. That's just my personal opinion. I don't want it chewing up that vinyl with the teeny tiny satin stitch. So the next thing I did was I added a name. So I'm gonna go up here and click Create Letters, type in the name Maddie. I don't know why I picked that. I don't know anybody named Maddie, but it just looked like a cute name to put on there. Um, I'm going to go down to one of my fonts that I sell at designsbylittlebee.com. It's called Heirloom. Now, looks kind of like a mess, doesn't it? So you're gonna go over here to your letter um, pane. I'm gonna click on the multi-line text. Go down to this little scroll bar that says space. This is the one that will make your letters get closer together. And you see that it's not an exact science, but it definitely saves you time. Uh, for example, I would want the E closer to the I, etc. So the way to change that is that you go to each letter, grab the little green square inside it, and then you can move them all independently. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now I select the whole name. I know I need to shrink it like quite a bit. So again, with essentials, you can safely shrink like mm, a lot. Um, I think that might fit. I'm gonna test it. I did it diagonal. Oh, not even close. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here to undo or control Z on a Windows computer. Need to make it a little smaller. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yes, I always make sound effects when I'm digitizing or <laughs> working. Um, twist that around, let's see if that one works. You know, I'm gonna stick with that one. I like it to be nice and full. Okay, that looks great to me. Now, one more tip I wanna give you before I come to the end of this editing is, especially if you're stitching on vinyl and especially if you're stitching on white vinyl, I don't know what it is about white vinyl, but it is so much more pillowy. Um, it might also be the color, just that it's white and we often use like darker colors on white, but it makes your stitches sink like the satin or column stitches and you really, really, whenever possible, you need to add pull compensation to your satin stitches because the little stitches like this, like between these letters right here and like on this part of the M, those are going to really sink in and it's not gonna look good. It's gonna look like you're chewing up the vinyl in those little um, skinnier portions. So here's how you fix that. Go down here to your properties of your word. You're gonna click stitch and you're gonna go down here. See where it says comp? That's compensation, okay? I usually do mine at two, but for this particular project, I'm gonna go three. Do you see how much fuller those are gonna be? Now you really need to watch because sometimes it can look a little messy or it makes your words, um, get your letters get too close together. So just try different compensation. I would say two is um, my usual. Um, for this one in particular, since I'm using white, I did choose three. Now you can still, in this mode, 
choose the letters. If one of the letters got way too close to another using that pull compensation, just grab the letter and manipulate it a little bit. If it got too close to the edge, you can still move and manipulate that word. Now I will give you a word of caution. In my last video, I showed you how to change one little element by using the stop button, stitch simulator, and then going and stopping to stop, for example, that dot on the eye if you don't want it to look so connected. If you do that, you will no longer have a lot, some of these properties like the pull compensation, okay? It will see those letters no longer as letters, but as different elements like, or different objects, kind of like it sees this fill stitch, okay? And you won't be able to edit it using those special commands anymore, okay? So make sure it's exactly the way you want it before you start using that Da, 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 and then stop. And if you don't know what I'm talking about or you missed that last video, I would encourage you to go watch it because it is closely related to what I'm doing here and could help you further edit a design like this. Now, the last thing I wanna say is that if I send this design to my machine just like this or save it just like this, it is going to stitch out exactly in this order, okay? It's going to go, gonna go up to Stitch Simulator. You will see that it's gonna do placement. That is, that purple is the, um, what do you call it, the finishing stitch where you would have your backing on that sanitizer case. Then it does the pocket placement, then it does the final stitch. Okay, then it comes out and randomly does the bow, the buttons, and the name just as they are in that order. If you want to change this order as you save the design, you have to go up here, expand this design, your sanitizer design or whatever you're using. I would select all three of these and I would move them up right after the placement. That is where they belong. Where do personalized elements go in an in the hoop design? They go right before you stitch on any kind of backing piece. Remember that a backing piece is what you put underneath your hoop that covers the quote ugly stitches. That is the tie-in tie-offs, the bobbin, all that, um, any nesting or knots or anything like that, you cover it with that backing piece. So anytime you're making an in the hoop design and you add a personalized element, you just stitch it out before you put that backing piece on. Now, in Embrilliance Essentials, there's a function called remove hidden stitches. What that does is that it removes stitches in a design that it finds to be a copy. For example, this placement step and this finishing stitch, those look exactly the same, don't they? And they should be. And if you have that button checked and then you save this design as a, for example, PES file, you're going to find that it looks like there's a bunch of stitches missing. Now you can go in and find that button and you can uncheck it and then you can resave the design. Okay, for me, that's too much trouble. I don't even like to do that. So when I am doing a design like this and I add personalization, I'm gonna undo I don't even move these personalized elements. I leave them right there, okay? When I get to my machine, right before I put the backing piece on, I skip to the bow, then I do the buttons, then I do the name, then I go back and I continue with my design. I don't know if that's being lazy, if that's just the way that I do it. I just don't care to like interrupt the original design and make sure the stitches aren't, um, the hidden stitches button isn't checked. That's just the way I do it. So I go into my software, I click Save Stitch File As, and look, I already had something like that saved, so I'm going to do Maddie Hand Sanitizer 2. Now that design is saved as a PES file in my software, I mean in my computer. You want to see what it looks like open a new window. I find that folder on my other monitor. I'm gonna drag over the PES file. Now you can see that it looks like one full design. And you can see all the color changes, blah, blah, blah. You can see where this should be the last step of the design, but then mine continues to the bow and then the shorts and then the name. And that's what I mean when I say that I go out and I skip forward do all these personalization steps, then I go back to the backing piece or to the snap placement, which I never stitch anyway. Now, you can run Stitch Simulator, you can look, this is how it's gonna stitch out. 
You can do all those things in Brilliance Essentials. And now you have a file that you have saved. If somebody says, hey, I really like that, could you add my kid's name to it? You're like, sure. You bring up this file. You can click add a name. You can delete that other name and you can start and just edit it, blah, 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 however you want. So that right there is how to merge your own little design that you have elsewhere onto a blank file. So instead of emailing a digitizer and saying, hey, I love this avocado felty, could you merge it onto your sanitizer case? You know, guys, I love to sell you designs and I certainly love to make money. I would much rather spend my time making tutorials to teach you how to merge things and then going off and being creative on my own and coming up with all new designs. It's kind of like that teach a man to fish. I'm teaching an embroiderer how to merge instead of merging for them. So I hope that this tutorial has helped you. Again, I'm using the Essentials module of Embrilliance. I love using Embrilliance because as you have the money and or need for different modules that they make, you can add in the modules just using the serial number that you purchased. And then you can come up to your toolbar and just click on the different uh, modules. And for example, if I want to add an element to this, well, let's take that name off. If I want to add a, an element to this using my own digitizing, all I have to do is go up here to my create, that's the stitch artist module, and I can just start drawing and adding to this shape all I want. And I really love that freedom to not have to go in and out of different software. You just, as you have the need or desire or money to add different modules, you just click, you type in that serial number and you are good to go using the awesome different functions of that module. As always, if you want to purchase any of the modules of their software, I'm thrilled if you use the affiliate link that I post below my tutorials. And you can buy any of the designs that I've shown in this video using the links below from designsbylittlebee.com. I will see you in the next video and I'll chat with you in the group. Bye!